Hello everyone, it's Erica again. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful week. And whoever doesn't know me, I'm an illustrator and teaching artist living in Monterrey, Mexico. I have a website, ericalancaster.com, in which I'm sharing my journey as I move from years and years of being a full-time employee into creative entrepreneurship. And I also love spreading encouragement and teaching what I know about art to others out there that are looking to learn. This is going to be the second video in a series of four videos. If you haven't watched the first one about using references to create your artwork, go back to the video that I uploaded before this one. I'm going to link it below. And this one is going to be about producing your own photographs to work from in order to create original artwork. So I'm going to be showing you the process of how I set up a still life composition in my studio and take those pictures and then I'm going to show you a time lapse in which I create a watercolor painting using a photograph from the ones that I produced in that photo shoot. I think it's very important for us as artists to start producing our own photographs and forming our visual library to work from. Because even though it's okay to use other people's photographs that we find online from time to time if we have permission to do so, you're limiting yourself to something that already exists and has already been made by another mind, a photographer's mind. So by taking your own photographs, you are ensuring that your artwork is completely original from your own tastes and your own likes and your own interests. In this video, I'm going to be sharing some tips so that you can quickly and easily produce your own photographs to work from doesn't necessarily have to be still life. I'm also going to be sharing tips about portraits and photographing animals and scenery and all the different types of artwork that maybe you're interested in producing. Let's get into it. Okay everyone, so for the purpose of this video, I decided to go with a still life composition. I love drawing and painting objects and it had actually been a while since I came up with a composition of my own to take photographs of. So what I did here was collect objects that I had laying around my house. And when I was collecting these objects, I made sure that I was thinking of a complete composition. So I had color in mind, I had a specific color scheme to work from. And I also was thinking of textures and shapes and sizes that would combine well together to create something interesting and cohesive to work from. It doesn't really have to be that difficult or time consuming for you to take your own still life photography. So if you don't have professional studio lighting or a shadow box, it doesn't really matter. If you can see in this video, I'm not actually using a shadow box. And I am using studio lights or lamps, but in the beginning when I started photographing still life, I was just using natural lighting. And so what I did before was just wait for a specific moments of the day in which I was able to create interesting lighting and shadows. And I just used the natural light coming in from the window to take my photograph. And in terms of the background, what you can do is use any type of large sheet of craft paper, cardboard, whatever you have laying around or whatever is cheapest. Here what I did was use fabric. Actually, I'm using a bed sheet. Make sure that your background is neutral and it doesn't compete or affect the focus or attention from the main objects in your picture. So just think about a neutral color background that doesn't distract the viewer from the main focal points in your painting. If you're not particularly into drawing or painting objects or still lifes, I'm going to give you some other ideas that you can use in order to make your photo shoots easier and faster, so you can have something to use as references. If you like to paint faces or portraits, something that you can do is have your family take photos of you, of your face, or you take photos of your family's faces. 
Something that I do recommend if you enjoy painting portraits is starting to think about what kind of expression or message or idea you're trying to communicate with your portraits. Because this is super important, the moment that you're taking somebody's photo, you want to think about how to use his or hers facial features and movements in order to create an effective photograph to work from that you will later use to transmit the message that you want to transmit. If you're into drawing or painting animals, you can use your own pet as subject or you can think of family members that have pets or friends that have pets and visit them. Something that I really recommend here is experimenting a lot when photographing animals because it can be kind of tricky. I really recommend experimenting with different colored backgrounds because depending on the color of the animal, it can really distract an effect. Something that I really recommend when taking pictures of animals is experimenting a lot and taking a lot of pictures from different angles and also from different distances from the animal. Another option, if you want to study more exotic or different types of animals, is visiting your local zoo. If you're into drawing or painting landscapes and you're lucky enough to live in or close by to a beautiful, natural, open area, take advantage of it and make time to go out and photograph it. And if you're not that lucky, make sure to take advantage of moments when you are traveling or on trips. Make sure to take lots of pictures wherever you're at, whenever you see a beautiful landscape. And not only take pictures of families or friends, take pictures of landscapes. Another useful suggestion if you like painting landscapes could be visiting a park, any park, or a place where there are a lot of plants and flowers and trees. Go there and take a lot of pictures of all of these different individual elements because studying all of these plants and trees is going to help you a lot when you're finally creating an actual landscape painting. And finally, if you are into painting indoor scenery, I recommend arranging a room in your own house or going out to cafes to take pictures or even shops wherever you're able to have permission to take pictures and create drawings or paintings based on those. So as you can see, it doesn't really have to be that difficult for you to come up with good reference images to work from and to start forming your own visual library in your computer of reference images so that you can pull them out whenever you need to. There are a few key things that I want to mention that are important when trying to create an effective artwork so that you can have them in mind before going out and taking your pictures. Firstly, it's important to give some thought to what it is your final piece is going to transmit to the viewer. So think about this idea in order to come up with specific colors and a general mood for your composition because all of this is important from the moment that you're starting to take your photographs so that you can ensure that the painting or the drawing is going to have the outcome you want it to have. Another very important factor in creating good photographs is the lighting. So, in a good photograph, there is always a good balance or a good play between lights and darks. I recommend keeping the light source only at one. So, use only one light source and decide whether it's going to be to the left or to the right and experiment with the angles so that you can finally come up with a picture that has an interesting lighting effect. Another super important thing to mention here is making sure that you're using a high resolution. There is nothing worse than thinking you came up with an amazing photo to work from and then actually going to print it or opening it in your computer and seeing that it's all blurry and pixelated. Do yourself a favor and make sure that you're using a camera that has excellent resolution because this will ensure that you're going to be able to work from it. Something else is that you have to start developing an eye for composition. 
So start thinking about the pictures as a whole. I'm pretty sure that you have heard of the rule of thirds. It's a way in which you can make sure that your whole composition is going to look aesthetically pleasing. This is a whole topic in and of itself. Try not getting too boggled down by it. I recommend going and experimenting by yourself. Just think about what you want your focal point to be in the composition. Think of how you're going to pull the viewer's attention or his or her eyes to that focal point in your composition and how their eyes are going to move throughout the composition. And my very last suggestion is going to be not to rush. Try to enjoy taking your pictures. Enjoy it as an important part of the process and take a lot of pictures in many different angles and at different distances and also make sure to store them and also organize these files well for yourself because this is going to be a very important visual library that you're going to have available for you to use whenever you need reference pictures to work from. Once you have selected your reference picture that you're going to be working from, Some artists like actually going out and printing their reference picture so that they can set it up beside whatever substrate they're going to be working on. And others actually just work from their computer screen. Personally, this is my case. I like being able to zoom in and out whatever area I am actually drawing or painting in that specific moment and being able to move around. You have to experiment on your own to see what you find most comfortable and what is going to help you create the most effective artwork. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Make sure to follow me on social media if you're interested in seeing what I'm working on on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to leave a bunch of information and links below about the supplies that I used in this video and also links to my website where you're going to be able to download some, some of the images that I produced in my photo shoot and also online shops so you can check those out as well. Thank you so much for watching again and I hope to see you back next week for the third part of the series. Bye!